When I was asked to participate in this program, it made me think about when I first started to code. If I could give that younger version of myself a piece of advice, this is what I would tell her. It never works the first time. Seriously, as a newbie, I expected it all to work like magic. I thought that following the rules and getting it right the first time would prove my value as a coder. But that's just not true. Not even the best of the best. If you expect to write perfect code on the first shot, you're going to be disappointed. You hear that, younger self? <laughs> Try not to feel overwhelmed by the details. Connecting the dots only comes with experience, so best way to learn is to just jump in. The truth is, everyone learns at their own pace. If you already know some of these concepts, feel free to skip ahead to the parts that interest you the most. If you're starting from scratch, take as long as you need for each concept. The assessments will be right there waiting for you when you're done. And if at any point you start doubting yourself, remember, even the most advanced programmers started thinking, Python? What's Python? Well, we're about to learn all about it. So let's dive in. At a basic level, a computer program is a recipe of instructions that tells your computer what to do. When you write a program, you create a step-by-step -step recipe of what needs to be done to complete a task. And when your computer executes the program, it reads what you wrote and follows your instructions to the letter. How nice is that? The recipe is written in a code called programming language. Programming languages are actually similar to human spoken languages since they have a syntax and semantics. Now, if it's been a while since your last grammar class, here's a quick refresher on syntax and semantics. In a human language, syntax is the rules for how a sentence is constructed, while semantics refers to the actual meaning of the statements. In English, sentences generally have both a subject, that's a person, place, or thing, and a predicate, usually a verb, and a statement that explains what the subject is doing. Let's take the sentence, Paula loves to program in Python, as an example. In this sentence, Paula is the subject, and loves to program in Python is the predicate. To form a sentence that others can understand, you need to know both the syntax that constructs the sentence and the semantics that gives it meaning. The same applies to programming languages. In a programming language like Python, the syntax is the rules for how each instruction is written, and the semantics is the effects the instructions have. Much like spoken languages, there are lots of programming languages to choose from. Each has its own history, features, and applications but they all share the same fundamental ideas. So once you understand the basic concepts in one programming language, it becomes much easier to learn another. And lastly, computers always do exactly what they're told. So when you write a program, it's important to be super clear about what you want the computer to do. Learning the syntax and semantics of the programming language you choose will allow you to do just that. Make sense? Before we continue, let's spend a moment on terminology. In the next few videos, you'll hear the term script being used a bunch. So what's the difference between a script and a program? The line between the two can be a bit blurry, and in this course, we'll use the terms interchangeably. In general, you can think of scripts as programs with a short development cycle that can be created and deployed rapidly. In other words, a script is a program that is short, simple, and can be written very quickly. In this course, we'll focus on a specific scripting language called Python which we'll use to learn the basics of programming. We'll learn about the Python syntax, the rules of how to write a Python program, and the semantics, or meaning, of the different pieces involved. Before we start learning how to code and having you write your first Python script, let's talk more about what automation is and why it's useful. Although we might not realize it, we reap the benefits of automation all the time in our daily lives. Do you ever pay your bills with scheduled payments or use a self-checkout at the grocery store? I always set my coffee machine to start brewing before I've even gotten out of bed. The promise of fresh coffee makes early mornings way easier. Automation is the process of replacing a manual step with one that happens automatically. Take a traffic light, for example, which continuously regulates the flow of vehicles at an intersection. A traffic light requires a human intervention only when it needs repairs or maintenance. The automatic regulation of traffic means that humans don't have to stand at the intersection manually signaling when cars should stop or go. Instead, people can concentrate on more complex, creative, or difficult tasks like focusing on where you're driving. What's more, traffic lights don't get tired, bored, or accidentally display a green light when they met red. This highlights another benefit of automation, consistency. Let's face it, 
us humans are flawed and sometimes we make mistakes. A human performing the same task hundreds of times will never be as consistent as a machine doing the same thing. But for all of its advantages, automation isn't a solution for every situation. Some tasks just aren't suited for automation. For example, they may require a degree of creativity or flexibility that automatic systems can't provide. Or for more complicated or less frequently executed tasks, creating the automation may actually be more effort or cost than it's worth. Think about when you get a haircut. What would it take to automate the actions of cutting hair with a machine? The client's height, the shape of their head, their current hair length, and desired hairstyle would all need to be taken into account when designing the automatic system. We'd need to replicate the creativity and skills of a trained specialist along with extensive testing to ensure the client's safety and quality haircut. And if you've ever had a bad experience at a hair salon, you know quality can be subjective. In this case, the cost and effort of automation just isn't worth the benefits of an automatic haircut would provide, which is why we don't have robot hairstylists. Not too complex, right? Automation is a powerful tool when used in the right place at the right moment. It can save time, reduce errors, increase consistency, and provide a way to centralize solutions and mistakes, making them easier to fix. Throughout this course and in upcoming ones, we'll be talking about when it makes sense to apply automation and exactly how you do it. Eventually, knowing when and where to use automation will become automatic for you. Working in IT, a lot of what we do boils down to using a computer to perform a certain task. In your job, you might create user accounts, configure the network, install software, back up existing data, or execute a whole range of other computer-based tasks from day to day. Back in my first IT job, I realized that every day I came into work, I typed the same three commands to authenticate into systems. Those credentials timed out every day by design for security reasons. So I created a script that would automatically run these commands for me every morning to avoid having to type them myself. Funny enough, the team that monitors anomalous activity discovered my little invention and contacted me to remove it. Oops. Tasks performed by a computer that need to be done multiple times with little variation are really well suited for automation. Because when you automate a task, you avoid the possibility of human errors and reduce the time it takes to do it. Imagine this scenario. Your company had a booth at a recent conference and has gathered a huge list of emails from people interested in learning more about your products. You want to send these people your monthly email newsletter, but some of the people on the list are already subscribed to receive it. So how do you make sure everyone receives your newsletter without accidentally sending it to the same person twice? Well, you could manually check each email address one by one to make sure you only add new ones to the list. Sounds boring and inefficient, right? It could be, and it's also more error prone. You might accidentally miss new emails or add emails that were already there, or it might get so boring you fall asleep at your desk. Even your automated coffee machine won't help you out there. So what could you do instead? You could get the computer to do the work for you. You could write a program that checks for duplicates and then adds each new email to the list. Your computer will do exactly as it's told, no matter how many emails there are in the list. So it won't get tired or make any mistakes. Even better, once you've written the program, you can use the same code in the future situations, saving you even more time. Pretty cool, right? It gets better. Think about when you're going to send these emails out. If you send them out manually, you'll have to send the same email to everybody. Personalizing the emails would be way too much manual work. If instead you use automation to send them, you could have the name and company of each person added to the email automatically. The result? More effective emails without you spending hours inserting names into the text. Automating tasks allows you to focus on projects that are a better use of your time, letting computers do the boring stuff for you. Learning how to program is the first step to being able to do this. If you want to get computers to do the work for you, you're in the right place. Earlier in this video, I told you about the first task I ever automated. Now I want to tell you about the coolest thing I ever automated. It was a script that changed a bunch of access permissions for a whole lot of Google internal services. The script traversed a large directory tree with tons of different files, checked the file contents, and then updated the permissions to the services based on the conditions that I laid out in the script. Okay, I admit, I'm a total nerd, but I still think it's really cool. 